Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to game four of SKT1 vs. STX Soul. And I will be commentating the entire series. That is my way of the commentator. Um, so that means that if, uh, uh, who has to win? If Flashin wins and brings it to an ace match, I'll go ahead and do the ace match as well, and that should be exciting. Although, I haven't seen this game yet, uh, but, uh, I'm gonna tell you now before I even watch it that if Madas wins and takes the game for SKT1, I'm still going to upload something for game 5, just to keep you guys guessing. Uh, I'll upload a fake game 5. Um, so if you uh, are looking at my subscriptions on YouTube and you saw, oh look, there's game 5, that means Flash and wins. Not necessarily. Uh, we will have to see together what happens here. Um, both these players, this should be an exciting matchup. It might be, well, it might be boring, but I mean, exciting in the sense that we're going to see some really good play here. Um, both these players have been playing really well lately. Um, uh, Quashin, bit of a slump the last several months, uh, ever since losing to Bisu in MSL. And then he's come back a lot recently. He's come back really, really well. Especially against Zerg. Zerg is his best matchup, uh, but uh, he's still good. I mean, he's just a good, solid player in general. So I'm expecting some good stuff out of him. And he's been playing really well versus Terran lately also. I mean, he's just come off of a win in the MSL against uh, uh, Nada, winning 2-1 two, two over Nada, then winning against uh, Nada as well in the Pro League. And, uh, well, he also beat some guy called Special. He's special uh, in the Pro League recently, but that doesn't really count. Uh, but beating, beating Light a couple weeks ago as well, so he's, he's uh, top of his game at the moment. Um, Madas on the other side, he was a pretty good player back in 06, I think. Really strong player back then. Then he sucked for a while. And the last, just this Pro League season, he's come back really, really strong form as a, a bit of a, a monster of, of sorts. Uh, by the way, Hwashin is going to be in teal in the bottom left-hand corner. Midas is going to be in bottom right-hand corner in white. Probably going to switch up between Midas and Madas. I don't know what I'll say. We'll see what happens. Um, of course, I, I I grew up as a commentator watching uh, Klazart. He calls him Madas because of his accent there, so I might call him Madas too. Uh, but I guess in America, we'd probably pronounce his name Midas. Um, anyway, yeah, the, there's Uvi, Coach Uvi uh, for SKT1 looking on expectantly. Hoping Midas Madas can uh, take out a win here. Yeah, but Midas, this Pro League season, he is basically one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why SKT1 is doing so well in the standings, in the Pro League standings this season. Because Midas has just been, uh, just taken off, just really supporting the team. He's been one of their aces. He's been one of their strong players that's been taking wins for them. Um, and he's really one of the, like I said, one of the reasons that they're in one of the top places in, in Pro League this season. I just said that twice, but oh well. Um, so, looking for some good play from both these guys. Uh, hopefully we won't see any uh, cheese or anything like that. Hopefully we'll see a good solid game because these guys will be, uh, be good players. Uh, by the way, Washington, like I said, he's in the MSL. He beat Nada. He's going to be facing Jadong. Uh, well, first of all, he's facing Jadong in the commentary of the week, actually. The commentary of the week is going to be Hwashin versus Jadong. That's going to be in a, a day or two. Uh, and then, a couple days later, he's going to be facing Jadong in the MSL as well. He's facing Jadong in Pro League, and we're doing commentary of the week on that. And then he's facing Jadong in the MSL a couple days later. And I am going to be doing a live commentary of his game versus Jadong, his set versus Jadong. I'm going to try, hopefully... For the love of God, my uh, connection doesn't crap out. And Midas going for... Oh my gosh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry. Washing, Washing going straight for Command Center. Straight for Command Center. This is incredibly risky. If if Midas goes for a two-fact build, then, then Washing has lost the game for his team. Because uh, this he is... Oh man, that's, that's really, really crazy. He's, he's gone straight for the Command Center. He's not even gone for the Barracks yet. Um, gets the Barracks second. So this is really risky maneuver. Um, but, you know, it's the kind of risk that pays off in the long run if, uh, if you can pull it off right. Um, uh, basically, the idea is you go for the command center quickly, and then you go and uh, you're going to have a lot of econ going on. 
But no! Okay, so, um, uh, sorry, I'm totally stunning right now for some reason. Midas, Midas has gone for, he's going for a, a command center as well. He's gone into a one factory build, and he's taken SCDs off of gas, so we're not going to see a two factory build. He is going to scout Washington, though. He is going to scout Washington. We'll see if he switches things up and goes for a try and, try and making a, a, a push timing attack really early. We'll see if he uh, switches things up when he does scout this. He's going to scout that quick command center. He's going to know exactly what's going on. Washington now is going to have a superior economy, though. It's going to come down to timing here, and I think the fact that, like I said, if he'd gone for a two-factory build, that would have been his demise, but he hasn't gone for a two-factory build. He's gone for a one-factory in the command center, so that means Washington is going to have a definite, definite economic lead uh, going into the middle game, and usually in games between top, top players like this, the economic lead, early economic lead, means that you have more forces out in the late, early game, into the mid game. You're going to be able to take the battles more, you're going to be able to put more pressure on your opponent, you're going to be able to get more bases, and especially in Terran versus Terran, it's often a war of attrition. There's often, um, you know, just a long game where you have to just take slight advantage and then increase the advantage and increase the advantage and just take more and more of an advantage every time, and uh, eventually you end up four bases to three, five bases to four, and, and that econ economic advantage um, really kicks in in the long run. And so basically, unless Madas does something either really quickly or... No, he's not going to go for something quickly. He's definitely gone for the command center uh, at his expansion. So uh, he's going to have to pull off something crazy in order to get back in this game economically or in the long run he's going to be in trouble. Although I'm not, I'm not going to say that this game is over right now because you can always pull off some sort of crazy drop, kill a bunch of SCVs, and, and get right back into it. Uh, but things are definitely looking in Flosh's favor. Flosh is going for a quick starport, and you often see that after um, a, a quick command center build, actually. A lot of uh, builds like this, you see a quick starport, you can, then you can basically try and use the wraiths to put pressure on your opponent early, get them to... Um, you're basically just stalling. You're stalling long enough to, um, you know, get your economy running and have your economy kick in. And so if uh, Flashin can can uh, do enough damage with some Wraiths, keep things... Yeah, he is producing a Wraith straight away. We'll see if he goes for um, uh, Madas' economy. Or no, he's not going to go for the economy because uh, uh, Midas is shelling his base right now. He really needs to do something about that. We're probably going to see him send the Wraith after that tank as soon as it comes in. Hopefully, Flashin is resourcing Siege Mode right now so he can also counter Siege Mode against uh, this push. But I think that's a really good idea by uh, Midas. He's gone for the Command Center but he's also gotten siege tech very quickly so he can put a lot of pressure on Wash and he knows that there's not going to be too much he can push out with right now so one tank in siege mode is going to be able to do a lot he's actually even a target it looks like he targeted that second SCV that was repairing and now the Wraith comes out but there's three marines there those three marines are going to have a hard time dealing with that Wraith uh, especially Wash and Mike it around very well it looks like Wash has just given up his, uh, his bunker and that was actually probably the best thing to do he doesn't really need that bunker right now the Wraith going in picking off one so all oh, the, the, the siege tanks picking off one of the tanks. Two Marines coming out. 